Hello, and welcome to another episode of Risky Business. Uh, today, we are going to continue where we left off last time, which was um, reading this documentation about PWM. So, uh, I believe we left off, uh, we read about the config register. And we were just uh, ready to start reading about the compare registers. So let's dive right into that. So uh, figure 15.3, PWM compare register, PWM compare zero. Uh, registers uh, PWM compare one through three have the same format. Uh, the diagram assumes that the compare width is 16. Uh, the actual width each register is uh, compare width. Uh, and we saw that earlier that uh, the compare width doesn't actually have to be 16. It can be less than that. Uh, I think 16 is the maximum that they allow. Uh, let's just confirm that. Um, the PWM unit can be provided in different comparator precisions up to 16 bits. So yeah, uh, 16 bits is the maximum. And right now I'm assuming that's what the uh, High Five One has. Uh, we'll check that at some point. So um, the actual, yeah, okay, we read this. Um, so we see uh, 0 to 15. So th this is showing a 32-bit register. Um, and uh, 0 to 15 is the uh, actual uh, PWM compare 0. So the first 16 bits of the 32-bit uh, register. And then the 16 to 31 is just reserved. So this is just saying uh, in actual hardware, it's uh, implemented as a, a typical 32-bit register, but we're only using the uh, 16 bits or less of it. So the primary use of the NCMP PWM compare registers is, is to define the edges of the PWM waveforms within the PWM cycle. Uh, each compare register is a uh, compare with bit value against which the current uh, PWMS value is compared uh, every cycle. And we already saw that when we were reading about um, the configuration register as well as the uh, count register. Um, let's see here. The output of each comparator is high whenever the value of PWMS is greater than or equal to the corresponding PWM compare X. If the PWM zero com uh, comp bit is set, when PWMS reaches or exceeds PWM comp zero, PWM count is clear to zero and the current PWM cycle is completed. Otherwise, the counter is allowed to wrap around. Uh, Deglitch and sticky circuitry. To avoid glitches in the PWM waveforms, when changing PWM compare X register values, the uh, PWM deglitch bit in PWM config can be set to capture any high output of a PWM comparator in a sticky bit, which is uh, PWM compare XIP for comparator X, and prevent the output falling again within the same PWM cycle. The PWM compare XIP bits are only allowed to change at the start of the next PWM cycle. So this is a pretty technical feature uh, apparently, if they don't have this hardware in there, uh, if you're messing with the PWM compare X registers while we're counting, I guess, is when you can run into some glitchy behavior, apparently, 
and they need uh, special hardware to account for that. And I guess that's what this is all about. Uh, which I don't think we care about because we're not going to be trying to like mess with any of these values when the counter is running, right? Um, but apparently that's a thing that you might want to do because they have hardware for it. <laughs> so, um, and I don't fully understand um, the problem here that this is addressing either. I'd have to like see it in action, I guess, to to fully understand what they're talking about here. So uh, note that the PWM compare zero IP bit will only be high for one cycle when PWM deglitch and PWM zero comp are set where PWM compare zero is used to define the PWM cycle but can be used as a regular PWM edge otherwise. If PWM deglitch is set, but uh, PWM zero compare is clear, the deglitch circuit is still operational, but is now triggered when PWM S contains all ones and will cause a carryout of the high bit of the PWM S incrementer just before the counter wraps to zero. The uh, PWM sticky bit will disallow the PWM compare XIP registers from clearing if they're already set and is used to ensure interrupts are seen from the PWM compare XIP bits. All right, um, generating left or right aligned PWM waveforms. So we've got a diagram here. Um, so we have PWM S here and it's going zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's, it's counting in uh, cycles of seven. And this is the, the scaled, um, uh, PWM counter. And so, um, we see here, they've dotted off the, the lines per, uh, per cycle here. And then uh, uh, down here, we have PWM, PWM compare X equals zero, equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So um, these are the uh, different waveforms, I guess, that you get when the compare uh, the compare register is set to these different values. Um, so let's read the diagram uh, description and then um, think about that and see if we can uh, logically make sense of what we're seeing here. So E300 basic right aligned PWM waveforms. All possible base waveforms are shown for a seven clock PWM cycle. Uh, yeah, we understand that it's uh, a seven clock cycle. Um, that's what we were seeing with the, the scaled um, PWM counter here. Uh, the waveforms show the single cycle delay caused by regis registering the comparator outputs in the uh, PWM compare XIP bits. The signals can be inverted at the GPIOs to generate left aligned waveforms. So when they say um, the waveforms show the single cycle delay uh, caused by registering the comparator outputs, um, I'm wondering if they mean, uh, you see these dotted lines in this diagram, right? Um, there, one thing I noticed right away is they're marking it off from one to zero rather than from zero to six, right? You'd think it would be from zero to six, but uh, it's actually one to zero, which uh, would make sense if we're talking about a one cycle delay, right? Like that's that's one, one delayed than from what we'd expect. So I think that's what they're talking about when they say uh, single cycle delay caused by registering the comparator outputs in the PWM compare XIP bits. 
Uh, the other thing, as we see, these are the uh, PWM compare X. So uh, if we say PWM compare zero, which is the one that they're uh, usually talking about. Um, so the idea here to reiterate is, um, um, where's a good quote I can give you here? So um, the counter is incremented at a fixed rate, then reset to zero at the end of every PWM cycle. Uh, the PWM counter is either reset when the scaled counter uh, PWMS reaches the value in PWM compare zero, uh, or is simply allowed to wrap around to zero. So uh, what's happening here is um, you see uh, if PWM compare X is zero, right, then we're going to count. So we count zero, and then the next the next cycle, the counter goes up to one, and um, that exceeds the um, uh, the PWM compare register, which is zero, and so it uh, resets the counter to zero, and that's why you see a flat line here, right? Because it's always gonna it's always gonna give you zero, and so um, when it's one, you see that there's this notch here. Um, so there's a signal that goes through a pulse that happens uh, every time the counter reaches one because it resets on on two, right? So, um, or I guess um, maybe the better way to say it is it resets on one, because um, like, let's look at that quote one more time. And I think this has to do with the, the delay we're talking about, too. So um, it resets when the scaled counter reaches the value in PWM compare zero. So uh, um, when this counter is going here, um, what's happening is, like in this first one, it's set to zero. So it's zero. Um, on the very first count, and that reaches zero, so to speak. So it resets it to zero, and then the next count is going to be at zero, and then it just it, it repeats like that, right? So I mean, to me, the the way to think about that then is it's like uh, if you imagine a circuit that's incrementing every time. Um, then you'd have to reset it after it increments, right? Um, because like if it's zero, and then you um, you reset it to zero, which I know doesn't really make sense in this example, but um, if it's at zero and you reset it, and then you do an increment, well, now the next cycle it's going to be at one, right? So. Uh, rather than doing it that way, you'd have it at zero, you'd increment it. So this is the start of the next cycle. Um, and then after you've incremented it, then you do the reset. And then that after that reset is the value that you, you take from it. So um, in the case of zero, that, that'll give you zeros all the time and you get this flat line. In the case of one, uh, it's going to count um, zero and then one, and then the next cycle it resets back to zero, right? And that's why you see um, it's only on, so to speak. Like the way this is drawn, uh, the line is like pulling down uh, each time there is a, um, a signal that goes through. So um, for one, you only get it when it's one. And then when it's two, you see it gets it when it's one and two. And that's, it just repeats like this, where uh, it gets longer and longer. And this is the same kind of thing we were seeing um, with the pulse signals. Um, we were talking about um, PWM yesterday and we saw that video. 
and that blog post that a uh, guy made. I think his name was Simon Inns or something like that. Um, and so he had some excellent um, like animations and diagrams of uh, PWM waveforms. And this is the kind of thing he was showing right here is um, he showed it the other way around where the line is low and then you send a, a pulse uh, where you uh, pull the line high. And um, he showed like animating going from from like the flat point at zero to in this example uh, six and then it goes you know back to to zero at seven in this example and uh, so yeah this diagram makes sense to me I think that is pretty clear what's happening there the only thing I'm a little bit confused about is the way they drew it. Uh, they drew it um, as if the line were high by default and it's pulling it low. I think in reality it would be the opposite of that. Uh, I don't know why it's drawn that way. So what else? Um, He, they also say here the signals can be inverted at the GPIOs to ge generate left aligned waveforms. Uh, I think I need to see that in practice to fully understand what they're saying there. So let's keep uh, reading. Uh, figure 15.4 shows the generation of various base PWM waveforms. The figure illustrates that if PWM compare zero is set to less than the maximum count value, which is uh, six in this case, it is possible to generate both 100% uh, PWM compare x equals zero and 0% PWM compare x is greater than PWM compare zero right aligned duty cycles using the other comparators. The PWM compare XIP bits are routed to the GPIO pads where they can be optionally and individually inverted, thereby creating left aligned PWM waveforms high at the beginning of the cycle. So wait a minute. Here they're saying 100% um, uh, right aligned duty cycle would be PWM compare X equals zero and 0% uh, being PWM compare X greater than PWM compare zero. And also um, we're talking about um, like this right here, that's a comparison of PWM compare X and PWM compare zero. So I thought uh, we were talking about like, um, I thought it was like, um, as if PWM compare zero and one and two and three, however many there are, I thought, um, yeah, there's zero to three. I thought they all were like exactly the same thing and that you could just like pick, uh, which one to use. I guess that wouldn't really make sense though, but, um, Apparently that's not the case. Uh, it seems that the one through three have a different purpose than zero. And uh, you can actually use multiple at the same time and they change what happens, I guess. So like um, what they're saying in this line right here about when PWM compare X is zero, uh, we're talking about um, that this line actually is high and it's it is pulling it low when you um when you have these um these go off right so that's interesting so So there's a, a few things to consider here. 
So we're saying PWM compare zero equals six. They say that right here. So, I mean, PWM compare zero is a register that looks like this, right? And so it can hold a value on a 16-bit value in it. And we're saying we're setting it to six. And then we're saying we also have a PWM compare X. Um, and we're setting that to either a zero, one, two, three, four, or five, six, or seven, right? And so, um, so what's happening here? If we have PWM compare zero set to six, and we have um, PWM S, um, So I mean, PWMS is the scaled version of PWM count. And um, I guess it doesn't matter how we're scaling it necessarily because um, we're resetting it to zero when it reaches um, the value in PWM compared to zero. Right, so let's assume there's no scaling and uh, PWMS is just directly referring to the the low bits in um, PWM count, right? And then it's the PWM count register is getting reset to zero every time it passes six, which is the value in PWM compared to zero. So as a result, we're using PWM compare zero to create a clock that is modulo six in this case, right? Um, that's the purpose that we're using the compare zero register for. And so like what's creating the signal though? Um, I'm sure this, this uh, circuit diagram would explain what's creating the signal. Like by creating the signal, I mean like the output, the waveform output, right? Because that's a, a digital signal that's being produced by this circuitry, um, which is the whole point of it. Um, so like, I mean, the PWM count is incrementing and occasionally getting reset based on the compare zero. So like, here's the compare zero in this diagram. Uh, here's PWM count. Here's uh, PWMS scale. Um, so you see PWMS scale is going into, uh, what is this, like an exclusive or, um, I mean, this, this circuitry right here, uh, whatever the details are, this is doing that comparison with PWM compare zero. And then uh, it's being used, you see these lines going up here and then there's some more logic. Uh, I don't really wanna work through the logic right now but we can say pretty safely that um, it's being used to reset this uh, PWM count when that passes, right? That goes through there and then resets PWM count. You see the reset line is, is right here, right? That's what this is going into. So I'm wondering if we can follow this to get like the actual output. It looks like it must be this right here coming off PWM compare zero IP.
So like what I'm wondering is if we're incrementing PWM count, um, when does it send uh, um, uh, a positive signal? Like when does it send 3.3 or five volts across the line? Um, does it send it whenever um, PWM count is non-zero or something? I mean, I know we're we're using this circuitry that is this part of the diagram to modify it, right? But because, um, like, we see here, um, if PWM compare X is zero you get this 100% on duty cycle. Whereas uh, when PWM compare X is six, we're only getting a pulse on the zeros in PWMS. Right. So then So are we saying while it runs it always produces a signal like it always produces a high line and then we use the the uh, PWM compare X registers to to say when to, to pull the line low I that seems to be what's going on here so I think PWM compare is zero and um, PWM count aren't actually related to the generation of the the signal per se. Uh, I think this circuitry always produces a a signal, just a solid um, signal. And then um, the way this works is we pull the signal low using the PWM compare X registers. And um, the counter and the PWM compare zero are used just to create the the um, timing mechanism to to make our waveforms. That's my current understanding of what's going on. I maybe don't fully follow it. But I'm sure we'll get a a clearer picture as we go on. And then when they talk about left or right alignments, uh, I think they mean you see in this diagram how, like here is a um, like a boundary between cycles and this is the right end of the cycle so this is the end of the cycle right here and when the the um when the the signal going across the line is um um on when it's high is always aligned on the right edge of the of the pwm cycle see like there's always an on on this this edge and then it it extends out from there right so left aligned would be the opposite where they're aligned over here and then they'd extend out this way right And they say that to get a left aligned signal, you invert at the GPIOs. So that's probably one of the reasons we have the um, 
exclusive var for GPIOs uh, built into the 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 hardware because I remember asking like why do we have that in hardware if we can just do it in software well one reason would be um, using that to do an inversion is a convenient way to um, to make left aligned waveforms with the PWM circuitry So here we see um, another table. Uh, we have values for PWMS, and then we have PWMS center um, as the right column. So we haven't seen what that is yet, the center thing. But let's look at the values here. So this first section, the values are all the same, right? And then once it gets to um, the high bit being set in PWMS, um, it seems that the value is inverted in PWMS center, right? Like this is the, the inverse of this, this is the inverse of this, and so on, right? So, so I see the pattern of what this is doing, I just don't know what it means yet. <laughs> So um, this is figure 15.5, illustration of how count value is inverted before a presentation to comparator when PWM compare X center is selected using a three bit PWMS value. Right, so I see that it's doing that inversion I still don't see what the point is or why it's named center. Oh, well, here we see why it's named center, don't we? <laughs> so here we see a PWM cycle where the, um, the points where the, the signal is high is um, centered within the PWM cycle. So this is for doing center aligned waveforms is the point of these um, these center things. So let's read more about that. I'm just rereading this part. So uh, generating center-aligned phase-correct PWM waveforms. The simple PWM waveforms above shift the phase of the waveform along with the duty cycle. A per-comparator PWM compare X center bit in PWM CFG allows a single PWM comparator to generate a center-aligned symmetric duty cycle as shown in figure 15.6, which is this uh, figure it down here. So, so a per comparator PWM compare X center bit and PWM CFG allows a single PWM comparator to generate this center aligned duty cycle. The PWM compare X center bit changes the comparator to compare with the bitwise inverted PWMS value whenever the most significant bit of PWMS is high. Okay, so that's what this is doing, is this pattern that we saw here that we identified um, where it inverts it um, when the high bit is set in the PWMS, right? We're taking that value 
and then we're using that for the comparison. And apparently that's the trick to get these center aligned waveforms. Um, I'd have to work it out in Milton to see why that's the case, that that would do that. But um, I don't think we're going to do that right now. I want to continue reading this and soaking in the information. So this technique provides symmetric PWM waveforms, but only when the PWM cycle is at the largest supported size. Uh, at a 16 megahertz bus clock rate with 16-bit precision. This limits the fastest PWM cycle to 244 hertz or 62.5 kilohertz with 8-bit precision. Okay, so we've got some pretty uh, specific calculations going on here. Um, we're going to want to take a look at that in more detail and see how they, you know, work through the math and understand how they arrived at these values. Uh, but like I say, we're going to probably come back to this. Uh, I want to continue soaking in the information. So higher bus clock rates allow proportionally faster PWM cycles using the single comparator's center-aligned waveforms. This technique also reduces the effective width resolution by a factor of two. So when they say this technique, are we talking about the using center aligned waveforms or are we talking about using higher bus clock rates? Uh, it's not clear. So they're saying that the higher bus clock rates allow faster cycles, which is pretty obvious, right? If you're running faster, you're getting faster cycles. Um, also, it looks like uh, my stream, I might be having networking issues. Uh, it says I'm sending zero kilobits a sec second, but then it's not incrementing the dropped frames either. So I'm not sure if I'm live right now, but we're going to continue nonetheless. Right, so it's pretty obvious that if you increase the the clock rate, you're going to get faster cycles. Um, but it says reduces the effective width resolution by a factor of two. If we're talking about the PWM resolution, a higher bus clock rate, wouldn't that make it a um, a more fine-grained resolution, like it would increase the resolution. But they're saying width resolution. So, I mean, the, the width between, um, like, the discrete units that I talk about, the, the notches on the, sorry about that, uh, the notches on the x-axis, right, um, those would get closer together. It would be a smaller width. So I guess that makes sense. But I'm not sure if that's exactly what they mean because they say by a factor of two, where here they're just saying higher bus clock rates, right? They didn't specify like twice as fast or something. So I'm not sure if I totally follow what they're saying in this paragraph. But let's continue reading. So here we have a diagram of center-aligned uh, waveforms. This says it's generated from one comparator. All possible waveforms are shown for a 3-bit PWM precision. 
the signals can be inverted at the GPIOs to generate opposite phase waveforms. When a comparator is operating in center mode, the deglitch circuit allows one zero to one transition during the first half of the cycle and one one to zero transition on the second half of the cycle. Okay. So generating arbitrary PWM waveforms using ganging. So this is the ganging thing is when you're using uh, not just um, PWM compare um, one, but also using the two and the three so that we can get more complex waveforms. So a comparator can be ganged together with its next highest numbered neighbor to generate arbitrary PWM pulses. Uh, when the PWM comparator X gang bit is set, comparator X fires and raises its PWM X GPIO signal. When comparator X plus one, or PWM compare zero for PWM compare three fires, the uh, PWM X GPIO output is reset to zero. Okay, uh, generating one shot waveforms. The PWM peripheral can be used to generate precisely timed one shot pulses by first initializing the other parts of PWM CFG when writing a one to the PWM one shot bit. The counter will run for one PWM cycle. Then once a reset condition occurs, the PWM enable one shot bit is reset in hardware to prevent a second cycle. So that's just restating what we already knew about the the one shot bit. Uh, and then the last thing is PWM interrupts. Uh, the PWM can be configured to provide periodic counter interrupts by enabling auto zeroing of the count register when a comparator zero fires. So that's the PWM zero compare thing that we were talking about. Uh, the PWM sticky bit should also be set to ensure interrupts are not forgotten while waiting to, r to run a handler. Uh, the interrupt pending bits, PWM compare XIP, can be cleared down using writes to the PW PWM CFG register. Um, the PWM peripheral can also be used as a regular timer with no counter reset. Uh, which is when you have the PWM zero compare set to zero, where the comparators are now used to provide timer interrupts. So you can also use the PWM, what this is saying is you can use it um, to generate timer interrupts in the same way that we use the, um, the timer interrupts with the um, seal int hardware. Right, so you can use the PWM hardware to do the same kind of thing, um, but that's not exactly the purpose of it. Uh, it's more intended for for waveforms. So that was a lot of information, a lot of in interesting stuff there. And um, I'm definitely going to need to soak that in, you know, and see some more examples of this and explore it more to really fully understand everything that we just read. So if we go back to the code, uh, ground ourselves in reality here, uh, we see there's um, PWM config compare to center. So, and there's a comment here that says to balance the power consumption, 
make one left, one right, and one center aligned. So I assume they're talking about the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel, right? And so they're saying uh, we're going to drive one of them left aligned, one of them right aligned, and one of them center aligned. Uh, I don't understand exactly how that's balancing power consumption, and I feel like that would like mess with the timing, wouldn't it? Because we want to like show certain colors at the same time, um, at certain intensities to get the to trick the eye into thinking it's seeing a specific color because uh, I'm not a biologist, but from what I understand, the human eye uh, has receptors that react to red, green, and blue. Uh, and then um, that's the reason we use RGB for our, our displays and the LEDs and everything, right? Um, because rather than actually creating a specific frequency of light, uh, like if we want yellow, do you see the color yellow? We don't actually have to have hardware that's going to create a, um, a beam of light that's at the frequency that we perceive as yellow. We can have, um, like, what was it, red and green that makes yellow? So you can have red light and green light really close to each other, right? And send that to your eye at the same time. And even though it's not actually yellow light, and if our, our eyes work differently, we'd see something else, right? We wouldn't, like, we'd say that's not yellow. <laughs> but um, because our eyes work this way, um, it's it has to, like, go off the red and green receptors and, like, try to... Um, figure out what the actual color is and so because there's only these red green and blue receptors in the eye and we're using red green and blue lights we can trick it into seeing whatever color we want right so that's my understanding of the the biology that's going on here but like if the timing if one of them within the duty cycle, if we're saying the duty cycle is running in parallel, right? We're saying everything is perfectly parallelized and um, there's three signals being generated uh, where the duty cycle is exactly in sync on the three different um, threads, so to speak. Then if one of them is generating a signal that's left aligned, one of them is right aligned, and one of them is center aligned, 